Let's learn about hidden parts in congruent triangles. If it looks like a triangle, it's a triangle. Why do we have to prove it? Because mathematicians like to prove things. On our agenda, we're going to recap our triangle congruence theorems, and then we'll find hidden parts of congruent triangles that will help us then prove them congruent. Let's get ready. You're going to need your notes, and make sure you draw and label the pictures in your notes and write the reasons down in your notes. So just to recap, we had six different ways that we could rearrange our S's and A's standing for sides and angles, and these were six possible shortcuts to proving two triangles congruent. However, we learned that ASS, angle side side, does not work, it spells the bad word, and angle, angle, angle doesn't work either because the triangles could dilate, one could be smaller, so they're not going to be congruent. But side, side, side works, side, angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle. And bonus, we have hypotenuse leg. So if it looks like it might be angle side side, but that angle is a right angle, then we can call it hypotenuse leg. So let's look for more parts that could help us prove triangles congruent. If I look at this picture, nothing is marked. What could be congruent? Well, I have three, three triangles, one, two, and then the whole triangle. So I'm trying to prove triangle one may be congruent to triangle two without any information. The thing that happens to be the same here is BD. BD is part of triangle one. It's also part of triangle two. So I can make that statement. I can say segment BD is congruent to segment BD. We've seen this before. When something equals itself, it's called the reflexive property. So we're finally going to be putting that to use. The reflexive property will hide hidden sides. Here we're going to look at this picture. We got lots of triangles here. I want to look at triangle AFB and triangle ECB and see how they might be congruent. So triangle AFB and triangle CEB. Remember the order's important how you pick it. Well, if you notice, they both have a B. So if I were to slide them apart, it would look like A, B, F, and it would look like C, B, E. They both have angle B in them. So we have that angle in both triangles. I can put the congruent mark. What is congruent? I can say angle B is congruent to angle B. The reason is reflexive property. So the reflexive property could hide congruent sides or congruent angles. Let's look at this one. So we've seen the picture before, and we do know that BD is congruent to BD. And the way that we draw that is we can put a squiggly there, and that means that those sides are congruent. But that's not what we're looking for in this picture. There's something else that's hidden. I do notice that I have the congruent marks on my leg, so this must be an isosceles triangle. If it's an isosceles triangle, then the legs are congruent. If the legs are congruent, then the angles, the base angles, must be congruent. So here I can say angle A is congruent to angle C. And the reason would be isosceles base angle theorem. Let's look at it backwards. So looks like the same picture. I'm given some different information. I'm given that now the angles are congruent. So therefore, I know that this must be an isosceles triangle. I can put my markings on this. So I could say that segment AB is congruent to segment CB. And the reason here is isosceles base angle converse. Remember, the converse flips it around. It says if the angles are congruent, then the sides are congruent. All right, here we have another picture that's not marked. Um, I call this the bow tie picture. And if we look at angle C, remember we can't call it angle C. I have to use all three letters because there's a lot of angle C's going on. But we have those vertical angles right in the middle, and those are going to be congruent to each other. I'm going to go down the short side and then along. So I'm going to name my angle that way. Angle B, C, A is congruent to short side to long side angle E, C, D. The reason is vertical angle theorem. We're going to see that a lot, so always be on the lookout for vertical angles. Let's try this one. Um, I see these little triangle arrow marks, 
and that means parallel lines. So if those two lines are parallel, then this one would be my transversal. If that's my transversal, then these angles are going to be congruent. And hopefully you remember that from parallel lines cut by a transversal, they're in the same spot. So these would be corresponding angles. And it's the corresponding angle theorem that then says that angle ABD is congruent to angle BCE. That's a hard one to see, and we won't see it that often, but if you're looking for parallel lines, they might be hiding corresponding angles. Oh, we have some more parallel lines. So parallel arrowheads, and these are the parallel lines. Well, interesting, and, and this is the bow tie picture again. BE could be the transversal, and then these would be congruent. So we could say angle B is congruent to angle E because of alternate interior angle theorem. Uh, or we could say that this is the transversal, and then these must be congruent. So we could say angle A is congruent to angle D, same reason, alternate interior angle. So when it's on um, parallel lines there on the bow tie picture, it's hiding both of those congruent angles. Let's recap. Vertical angles are going to hide congruent angles. So something like that. The reflexive property could hide congruent sides, the one that comes right down the middle. Reflexive property to hide congruent angles would be hiding that one. Parallel lines, alternate interior, that would be my bow tie picture. Parallel lines hiding alternate interior. Parallel lines corresponding, that's kind of the two triangles stacked on each other, and they would be hiding those. Isosceles base angle theorem, so given the legs, the angles are going to be congruent, and the opposite, given the angles, the legs are going to be congruent, so that's hiding the sides. Let's just do a couple practice. Do these have three parts congruent? Well, they both have a right angle, so those are congruent. They both have a five, so those sides are congruent. So I have an angle, I have a side, and then I have my vertical angle. So we could say angle BPA is congruent to angle CPD by vertical angle theorem. And then we would list our angles. So we could say angle A is congruent to angle D because right angles are congruent. And we know that AP is congruent to DP because given, it's given in my picture. So then I have angle, side, angle. We can conclude that triangle BAP is congruent to triangle CDP by angle, side, angle. And we just did an, a triangle proof. Nice job. Let's look at this one. Do we have three congruent parts? Well, I have this angle with the one mark. Those are congruent. I have the two marks. And then I have the piece in the middle. I'm not going to do the entire proof, but we have angle, side, angle. So I could say that AC is congruent to AC because of reflexive. And then I'll be able to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC because of angle, side, angle. In our last practice, well, I've got some marks. I've got my sides congruent. I've got parallel, and we know that parallel high congruent, mar uh, congruent angles, those are alternate interior. So I can say angle B is congruent to angle E because of alternate interior angle theorem. And I could say those two middle angles, so three letters, angle BCA is congruent to angle ECD by vertical angle theorem. Therefore, I have an angle, a side, and an angle. So these two triangles, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle 
let's see, I went down this side to the short, so I'm going to go down this side to the short, triangle DEC because of angle side angle. They're not always going to be angle side angle, that's just a coincidence. Recap, find the hidden part, whether it's angles or sides, state the reason, and then use it to prove two triangles congruent. Nice work.